Um, yeah, thanks a lot, Jim, for the opportunity to be a speaker at CentraCon. And um, I hope that uh, my talk will be in the area of the previous talks. Um, and yeah, what did I prepare? I prepared a talk on formulas. And for formulas, you need data binding. And um, in the end, I will come up with uh, some pro trips and uh, right down there, you see an ID. I uh, created a fiddle so that um, after this talk, you can play around with my formulas. Um, um, yeah, um, I would say let's just start. So uh, you might know me from a couple of other talks. Uh, here is my... Um, Center MVP um, training sessions on YouTube. Uh, the formulas which I mentioned earlier, you can see in here, this is right the same as what we will work on today. So let's start from the beginning. On the left side, you see my setup. I created an app within a workspace and within that app folder, um, you have this app.js, and as you can see down here, I will start with the VC view, formulas view. So that's basically where we are at, and all these three files are already opened up here. So I will close that sidebar, and uh, you know that we do have our main view, which is a panel. We have a view model and a controller. So my first thing I would like to show is um, if we have a, a container with some defaults. Defaults means that all these items in here are pasted into each of these items. So if I use in here HTML, let me just refresh this. And we start with this standard title, which is up here. So, but already this one shows true. And this is because I already um, added a line in here uh, within this binding. So typically if I remove this and I restart this, we will only get uh, just a second. Let me reload that. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Value not set. It's exactly what you see in here. As soon as we add a data binding, this one will overwrite the original HTML with the value in here. So let's try that again. And this one results in true. And um, this is because I'm using a data binding for HTML to user writes user write true. So if I take a look at my view model, data user writes user write true. So my naming will be for this whole session, user write false will be false, true, true, null, null, and undefined will change based on whatever button I, uh, I push down here but it will always start as undefined. This is really important to understand for this session. So now if I place in here user write undefined and I restart the right side, something awkward will happen. It will write show nothing. As you can see in here, value not set. So it's still the original value, but we did and um, a data binding here, user writes undefined. As long as something is undefined, it won't be uh, solved. The data binding won't be solved as long as it is undefined. So if I change it to true, it will change here to true. As I mentioned before, all these buttons down here will change my user writes undefined. So if I press false, it will become false. If I press null, it's just gone. 
If I press undefined, nothing happens. So we'll get into that now. Now there is another case. <clears throat> this is typically what you might see in most applications. But in here, I added some HTML in front and behind. And what hap what's happening is that it will write value is true. So this, you can add a couple of things. So basically everything in here is just a string. And to mark something as data binding, you will just add these brackets, curly brackets, and write whatever is in your uh, data binding in your view model. So in my view model, I, I wrote here formulas. And here you can see it's an Elias view model formula. So it will take the data from here or from a parent view model if it is not available here. I added a second data object in here, which is just for language. I added English ready, ready result. We will get into that later. So <clears throat> this is a very, very basic example. And I will continue with more examples. In here, we do have a data binding and it says undefined. So basically what we had before with this user rights undefined, what do you think will happen? Will it print this value is undefined or what should happen? So it's important to understand that nothing happens as long as something is undefined. But if something is null, then it will be evaluated right away. You see, the only difference is that I'm pasting in here, UR, user um, rights null, instead of user rights undefined. And all of a sudden, this seems to be working. So undefined is a very special case. We need that later on, this understanding of when data binding will be updated. That's why I'm going into it right now. So now to another example. In here, first we say user rights true. So if this would be a if, <coughs> then it would say if it is true, okay, let's leave here, everything is fine. Now let's see for data binding what's happening. In data binding, again, it's the same as before, as long as not all items in here have values, it won't be solved. So now, why shouldn't, if, if we can have something like or, or, and in here, why do you, why would we want to use formulas? And that's what comes next. So formulas are basically exactly the same as what I used in here, just a combination of if something and or and stuff like that. Um, but let's say we have something like this in here. In here we have a text and then we want to figure out one of these things if it is true, then make it true. As you can see here in my browser, this goes slightly beyond the max length of what I think should be readable within the code. So this really gets messy as soon as you work with something like this and users typically don't expect a lot of logic in a data binding. That's what um, makes formulas so, um, so valuable. Let's just see for now what happens in here. We have it is is now, true or not false. So that definitely should be true. <coughs> As you can see in here, it's true, it's already solved. Although we have a null in here, if that would be undefined, it wouldn't solve it. Okay, so we have that in here. Now let's remove the data bind the binding of raw in here. Let me just limit this a bit so that we get a better view on this. As you remember, all these values in here, so the X type and the HTML is copied into each item. 
So if we now go for the second one, T binding, <coughs> we still have the HTML and the X type besides the CLS and the body padding. And in here, what we are doing is we're saying bind T binding. Now let's see if we find T binding in our view model. In here, it just says user and language. And in formulas, we get the T binding up here. So this is how you create a formula. Torsten, um, sorry, sorry yes. to interrupt. Can you move your your camera window to the right hand side of the screen? Because you're covering yes, up sure. some of the code there. Sure. Thank you so, so much. If you have this T binding in here, thanks again. If that happens to me again, please remind me. And um, so we do a binding. It's the same as we had here with this bind. It's the same wording. Okay. So in here now we have a bind, and again we come with these curly brackets. So we define that is undefined equals to the value of this user rights, user rights undefined, and the false to our you are <coughs> false. Then we use a get method. And the values is basically these two in here. As you can see in here, values is undefined and the values is false. And in here, we can handle the logic. And that's where um, you typically uh, think, would think that the logic would go instead of going right here into the view. So, what do we have in here? We um, added return value is undefined and is false. And again, as you can see up here, it says value is not set yet. If I click here on true, you see this red highlighting, it always pops up when something changes. So if I go for false and just look here for this one, it will pop up red again. Going to null, it's popping up. Going to undefined, nothing happens. Going back to null. So if you go between null and undefined, nothing will happen. But if you come from true and you go to undefined, it will change. So this is so important to understand because sometimes your code might not work the way you think just because of this undefined state. And going from undefined to null, again, will do nothing. And going from false to null and back will always, um, uh, there will always be something be happening. So it's between null and undefined that you have to understand if it changes from undefined to null, nothing will happen. But for the first time on the first run, let me just um, do this. So right now it's undefined. And if I go to null, it will change. But if I go back to undefined and forth, nothing will happen. And this is very, very specific to data binding and to formulas. OK, so with all this explained, you might uh, say, yeah, but I know there's a different way of writing this. Right. There's a different way where instead of I'm saying via get, you will see that in here, the results in here, via get is the same um, formula basically as T binding. It's just a different writing. What happens in here is that you assign a function instead of an object. And with this function in here, you have this get function, um, variable, um, what is that, uh, argument, and this get argument is a method which allows you to add um, data bindings. So again, user writes, user writes undefined. What happens is that before XJS launches, when this gets created, um, it will assign a binding to whatever is in these get methods. So basically it's identical. As you can see in here, this is a binding and whenever something changes, 
in these bindings, it will ask the formula to rerun the get function in here and here the function. So prior to running, it will bind these two items so, uh, to recognize whenever there's a change in, in that binding. And again, as you can see in here, these two will behave identical. So if I'm going to true, both of them update. If I go to false, both of them update. Going to undefined, both update. Going to null, nothing happens. And going back, nothing happens. So um, my this log functionality up here is basically doing this reddish part and to write something into my um, console. And the main magic is actually are these two lines. Okay. <laughs> so now that we understand how we can write um, our um, formulas, <laughs> excuse me, our formulas, um, I will stick to this type of writing. This is identical. It works identical. It's just fine to use. But for me, I prefer this writing, and that's why I will continue with that one. So the next one is a very, very special case. What happens in here? So we have this get. Looks very close to this get, does it? But it's completely different. So let's try, first of all, let's try to see what it's doing. Let me rerun this. And we go for this. Did you see that initially it was running? Let me rerun that. Initially, you will see this one will turn red. It was running. And there is a result. Ready result is false. And if I change in here to true, it's not updating. Whatever I press down here, it's not updating. So there seems to be a big, big difference between this get and this get. The difference is if I say in here this, it means this get view model from the point of view of the view. It's the view model. This, the scope of this is the view model. And that would be exactly the same as if you would go for this get from within the controller. If you try to uh, grab a value from the view model, you would say this get view model get. So if this can be this get view model, and then this is the get function of the view model. And because in here it marks whatever is in within the get, not this get, within the get method, will be marked as listen to changes. In here, there is no get, so there's no listen for changes. If there's no listen for changes, it will run initially. That's why, although we have a um, user uh, rights undefined in here, in here it doesn't run initially because this hasn't been defined. In here, it hasn't been defined, but it doesn't matter because it will run initially and then never ever again. So just make sure you never ever use this get from within the view model, uh, from within the formula. Now we have something in here, this get language en ready. That's where we get this ready result up here. If we take a look into our item, so this was the other one in here. Oh, the, I'll get into that. Um, so in here, we just have via this get. So I just moved the language string right into here and then created one full language string in here. That would be the same as if we would add in here the language string. We could do that. And then we would have it in here too. But for this get, I added another data binding in front. So what you can do within this HTML string, this is basically a string. That's why it recognizes there's an empty space in between. And then it just creates 
my um, HTML from the language ready plus space plus whatever my formula is. So this is a data binding to language en ready. And the other one is a data binding to via get. If at a later point we are looking for via get, it will behave as if it would be part of our data. Just for you to um, um, remember later on that if we are looking it up for this get view model, we will find the formulas within the data object. Okay, so we hopefully understand that this get is completely different from this get. And that's another reason why I prefer to go with this one. And again, we have a get method in here, which will um, add the return value to our data binding. The same in here, the return value is the value of our key via get and so on. So what else did I prepare? Let me take a look in here. Let me go back to the view first and open the next one, binding. So we're starting again with the ready result. So language has, to, has been taken care of and binding. <coughs> and this is this section up down here. So in here, we are using a binding to user rights. What happens is we are binding everything to this object. And what happens is that if I go here and I go to true, it's not updating. This one, the second last one, is never been updating. And the reason for it is that we are binding it to user rights to an object. As long, so to this one. So as long as we are not changing the object, it won't update the formula. It's kind of the same as if you write something like const test equals to an object. And later on, you're going for test.a equals one. You can do that, but you can't go for test equals a new object that will always uh, throw an error. So the object itself will not change even if something inside changes. So if you're doing a data binding to user rights our object, and you're running here rights undefined um, and rights false, it will not update, though it will run initially. Let me just rerun this. The second last, you see it turned red, and we do have a result in there. So, the binding user rights is not undefined, it's an object. Inside the object, there is something undefined, which doesn't matter. So it will run as long as we do have a valid object and whenever the object changes, then the binding will update. As you saw in here, it's not updating because we're just updating a value. To solve that problem, let's go for the next one. There is something called deep binding. So I named it deep binding in here. And in here you can see it's my deep binding. You write it slightly different. Let me just remove that frame from there. Move me up again. Okay, so <clears throat> um, I'm using bind with a bind to the object. It's exactly the same as up here. I'm binding it to the object, but I add a second deep true. And with that, 
uh, XJS knows, oh, this formula should run if something inside changes. And as you can see in here, we do have a deep binding and we are referring to user rights undefined. Let's see if that runs out of the box. And yes, it does. As you can see, it turned red. And if I change it now, and if I change to undefined, to null, to undefined, it's always running. So if you're working with an object and you add a deep binding, it will listen to all changes within that binding, with that object. And that, if you have to work with something like uh, an undefined value, this might be the way to go for you. Okay, so um, this is basically the last type of binding. You have heard today that as long as something is undefined, it's always prone to problems. And uh, if it is null, undefined, always be careful with the um, formulas and really think about when something should happen. I had it on so many projects that um, people were using undefined and they thought this has to run initially. And as you saw up here in all my formulas, this one will not run until all bindings inside are solved. Okay, so um, this any questions so far about what we talked so far? If you have this code, please, yeah. Yes, I will. Um, how can I share the fiddle title in here? Oh, I can paste it in there. Okay, I understand that. So let me just copy this, paste it in here, make it to. It seems I can do that. Could you please uh, copy paste that fiddle for everyone, um, Damerson? That would be awesome. Okay. So, <clears throat> um, if there are no questions so far, then I will continue with my view controller. In my view controller, <clears throat> I have this updated section, which is basically this log down here, the method, fires an event on the view updated section with the ID. So ID would be deep binding in here, for example, and it will fire the event. <clears throat> and my view controller listens to um, the events of the view. You can use a hash and go for updated section and then run the unupdated section. This will just add a CLS and remove the same CLS after 800 milliseconds. And that's why we get all these nice red overlays. So then I have the option to listen to changes the same as our formulas. Let me just collapse a couple of things in here so that we can easily read all that stuff. Oh, okay, sorry for that. So, so in here we are saying bind and listen to changes of this and this. In the view control, we can do exactly the same. We can say listen to changes whenever user rights undefined get changed, run on binding change. As you can see in here, whenever there's a change to user rights undefined, then please write to the console current, and you can see that in here. That's exactly where that comes from. So let me clear this. Let me go to true. It says current undefined, true. Oh, awesome. Null. Current undefined, null. Oh, cool. Undefined nothing. It's exactly the same problem as before. As long as this hasn't been solved, the bindings within the view controller won't be solved either. 
Um, I'm sorry for the bad lightning um, in here. I try to block the sun, but at this time of the day, it's getting a bit difficult. Uh, so, okay. So what else do we have? A deep binding. So how can we do a deep binding? And again, do you remember down here, we had this deep binding and the special writing was bind to user writes deep true. Let's go over here and go for bind to true. And the special in here is I'm using the user. If you take a look over here, it says user.writes. So if we scroll up, user.writes, this is what we were listening to in our view model formulas. And this one is listening to user. The deep binding. So there's a question here. Your fiddle is password protected. Oh, uh, I will unlock that later on. Um, sorry okay. for that. Um, sorry. I will take a look, a look at that after the session. All right. And if you could put your video in the lower right, that might actually be better if so you're not covering up anything since I'm interrupted you already. Uh, to the lower right, I can't. I'm sorry, I didn't okay. prepare that. Right, let me let me try that. Um, it's this one. Is that better? I hope. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's perfect. <clears throat> cool. <laughs> sorry for that. Um, so. Um, the deep binding doesn't go just one level deeper, but it goes several layers deeper. I'm not exactly sure how deep it uh, the binding goes, but from my point of view, you shouldn't worry about that. So that's why I used in here the deep bind just for the very top level user, just to show that this works too. So that would be the do your stuff here. Any other questions so far about bindings in the view controller? Uh, no questions about that. Just some good feedback that people said that they're enjoying your session. Okay, cool. Thanks a lot. Um, so, <clears throat> when to use bindings and when to use formulas? That is probably a question a lot of people have. There is no right or wrong in that. It's more or less, if you prefer, let me just collapse this for a second. My typical order is data stores formulas. And this is for the sole reason that I want, whenever someone looks up formulas, they know they have to scroll down. Whenever they're looking for data, they know it's right on the top. Whenever they're looking for stores, they look right underneath um, the data. And that's exactly the same with using bindings or using formulas. Once you start your project, you make up your mind where you want to have this logic. Some people think that it's a lot of logic and it should go to the um, controller. Some people think that it's mainly you won't do, uh, you won't try to overdo this, so it should go to the formula section. And um, yeah, I can't really answer that for you. I guess inside your project, you have to figure out as a team if you want to use formulas or bindings. If you're used to, I personally would place this bindings right uh, underneath the control. Um, or above the control, so that you always have the same layout. Let me just change this. <clears throat> so for me, it would always look like this one, <clears throat> so that we always have the, let me remove the explain later, the bindings, then comes the control, and then Alphabetically, I would have the on updated on something 
And <clears throat> so I just <clears throat> changed it for this lesson so that you understand that this is the control part and the other one is about data binding. And so if you're used to having a lot of controls, then most likely I would put bindings into the view controller. If you happen to have just short formulas with on the point logic for the data binding, then it's perfectly in the formulas. And yeah, yeah, that's basically what I would go with. Any questions so far? Okay, so there is one more thing I prepared. I prepared a grid down here. Let me just add this. And is that correct? Yes. And add uh, the store. Let me just collapse this, use the store. In here, you can see that I prepared a store and we have to add a button. So let me just check if this runs right now. Okay, so we have this load button down here and we want to load the grid. And let me just check my formulas. Okay. Let me get rid of that for a second and run this. If I press load, you can see that it loaded all these different items in here. Now, if I add this formula, which is bound to my store, grid store, and the grid store is bound as a store uh, up here, is bound as a store, grid store. So all these data come from this grid store within the view model. <laughs> uh, let me just collapse everything we don't want to see right now so that it's easier to read. We don't need this. So, okay, so, so this CLS based on grid loading is bound to the loading option of the grid store. So if I go in here and say X first grid, um, this is my grid. Sorry for that, I messed it up in the last second, great. So if I go for grid.getStore, you can see in here, and now I have to move my picture again. Let me just move me over there. Um, that we do have this loading and it's currently it's false. But as long as the loading takes place, it will be true. And what I want to do, I want to this loading, as long as it is true, as soon as this switches from loading false to true, it will run and it will return based on true or false that it is updated binding. So if I go in here, going for, let me rerun this, going for load. <clears throat> It just give me a second. I need to find out where I edit this most likely. Uh, oh, up here, sorry for that. So I had a data binding for that up here. Yes. So it should add bind CLS. Let me rerun that. Oh, it's too fast. Sorry for that. So I have to go up here to show that because it's just, lightning fast and say that I want to go only with a fast 3G network. And as soon as I add that, you can see that this 
or everything in here is overlaid as long as the loading takes place. I know this is way too long right now. Um, <clears throat> I've prepared another one which is slower. If I load again, you can see that as long as the grid is loading, the store basically is loading, it overlays this part. So what I want to show with that is that you easily can use properties of a store or anything else that goes inside the view model. The grid store is part of the view model. And as uh, soon as anything in here changes, <clears throat> you might be able to use this property of the store as a binding. There are a ton of um, properties which you can use, uh, but I thought that this would be a very good example to show that on loading, you can use that. I hope that's easy, to easy enough to understand for everyone. Okay. So there is one last thing and it's in here. Oh, now I moved the bindings up here. You might know that for a, let me just collapse all these things and go back to our grid. You can add a binding to selection. So if I click something in here, I select something, as you can right away see here, I right now selected Dudley Townsend, and it's Dudley Townsend. If I change that, I get a new object in my um, console, and it changes to Branch Carson. So this is my se current selection. And I can do a data binding to this one. What I typically do is, as soon as I define a data binding, I ensure on the same level to have that added in here. So that would be grid <coughs> selection. And initially it would be null. It's just to make sure that as soon as another, another programmer starts to work with my view model, um, he or she doesn't, on accident, reuse this and doesn't know that I already used it. So I per personally prefer to have that set on the level, and the level would be for this grid, it's this view, so it goes into the same view model of that view. <coughs> so why do we see this in here? And the reason for that is that with this method, or uh, with this bindings on selection change, goes that this method will be run as soon as this grid selection changes. You might think, hey, Torsten, but you said that this is an object, as we all can see in here. If there is a change inside the object, it doesn't run the binding again. You're right. Perfect. But this time, it will replace the whole object and not the part inside, the record which gets um, selected is an object and that gets exchanged for the selection binding so it's always an object so that using this i always get a new object as you can see down there it's always a new object and that's why it always triggers the binding inside my view controller and the only thing I'm doing here, I'm saying console direct, directory, record get data. And record get data, I can use record also. Let me just rerun this. And now if I click on the, oh, uh, 
gosh, I should have returned this to full speed. Sorry for that. Let me load that. So if I go in here, now we get a constructor and this is a typical record. So if I change this, I get a new constructor. The full constructor object has been exchanged and that's why we get always a new um, output and a new um, bind the binding reacts to our changes in the grid selection. So that's basically all I, cre I prepared for today. So if you have any questions, feel free and I can go live on this again. And uh, yeah, uh, unfortunately, I already took my spare questions, which I had prepared. Uh, um, camera back to the right. We do have a couple of questions for you. Yeah, sure. So the okay. first question is, can I bind the store properties? Can I bind the store properties? Yes. Uh, let me just move myself over here again. Um, this is uh, with the grid store loading. The loading is a, let me just go back to grid and S equals to store. Um, so in here, the store property would be the loading. Even the load count would be a property that you could bind. So it's basically a kind of deep binding that you're doing on this. And the load count, whenever you load, it would trigger, but then it would stay the same. So this wasn't a good example for me for this session. I thought it's a better example to have the loading, which out of the box switches to false and back and false and uh, false and true, true and false and so on. So that's why I used uh, this one. And um, yeah, whatever you see in here, whenever there are changes, you can use that. Uh, but most of them you have to fire uh, to change on your own. Loading will be automatically changing as soon as the store starts to load the data. Okay, I hope that that um, explains the uh, answers to the question. The next question is: How can I use deep binding in a controller? Deep binding in a controller. Over here, we had this. If you let's go first for the deep binding in here, it's always with this bind to user rights deep true. So the deep true is basically the um, binding, but typically what you write is bind and then you go with um, either this one and say user dot rights dot user right true or you go with this one where you're saying user right true equals to this one and in here you can't just say by um deep true that won't work so you have to work with bind to and then to use the deep binding so this is inside our uh, formulas and inside our controller we have the same structure deep bind as a bind true and what we want to bind and then using the deep true Okay, I hope that I explained that. Any other questions? Uh, the next question is, the bindings include the setters. In the example, there is no set necessary for changing parameters, uh, parameter values. Uh, could you say that again, please? I'm not sure. That, I'll try again. I'm not sure I understand it. It says, bindings include the setters, question mark. In the example, there is no set 
necessary oh, okay. for changing yes. parameter values. So if you let me explain this from within the view. Let me add in here a uh, config. This is what typically comes from XJS out of the box. So if you add in here a test one, if you create a view with a config, then everything within the config will receive a getter, setter, apply, and update. Let's just test that. Let's go in here. <laughs> now, what we can do is x.get, and we um, simply get the main um, panel dot component now this is our component the view component everything in this file is exactly this so we say in here this is my panel and panel dot get test as you can see it exists this is how you can get if if i go in here for example and say console log this dot get view, which is the view, dot get test. Then this one will output a number one as we assigned it to, as you can see in here. Yeah. So this is my this get view get test. And if I remove this, this from here, just to have the opportunity to see if it wasn't there already. <clears throat> oh, I messed it up. Oh, yeah, because right now it says there is no get test. So this definitely creates a getter. And how this works is internally, Sancho says uh, get test is a function. And this one, uh, function, I should, shouldn't misspell it, right? Function, okay, that's way better. So now if I go in here, I add a comma. This one says um, return. And then it says this underscore test, uh, this dot underscore test. And at the same time, XJS, creates a set test. So typically you would assign a value in here and this one would say this underscore test equals to value. But that's not all. What happens internally too is that there is a um, apply test. And typically what it is used for to ensure that the values that you um, assign to the um, new config test that this one works. So this will say, again, value. And this will say, you can add whatever you like to. This could say, if a value, what was that, is not a number value, then return zero. So this would just check that this is true. And this will be called in here. This is all internally to XJS. This would say if there is, um, if apply test, then apply test. And then last but not least, there's another line. It says if update test, then update test. And that will be another one which will be auto-generated for all configs. And this one is used um, if you want to update, update DOM, do something else that has nothing to do with the setter of the value. It's just 
Let's say you um, have a search bar and you enter a value. Then on setting the value, you want to send something to the server. And that would go into the update test. So that's yes, for each config part in here, that's get a set appliant update. And in um, our view model, all these um items we used in here loading and so on they need a getter setter appliant update to be bindable so let me just scroll down here to my um we have, we have just have four minutes left here and i got a couple more questions so uh, let me just, okay, uh, sure. just answer these last questions really quick um well, yes Within the view controller, the binding config is a new technique to me. Has that been around at XJS all these years, or is it a relatively new feature? Uh, the data binding has been available since, I believe, 5, XJS 5, at least 6. Okay. And um, should I worry about performance or memory implications of deep binding? Does establishing an individual binding to each descendant property into the bound object, or does it establish? Um, yes and no. Uh, you should definitely know how deep your object may, may get. So if your object gets a thousand lines deep and a thousand items per line, then yes, that there might be a problem with that. But other than that, um, on a lot of projects, I'm using uh, the complete language as data binding. So I'm just setting to the main view model. I have something that's called uh, I18M. And in that object, I have all my uh, translations and it works very smoothly without any problem. Okay. And the last question here says, uh, I sometimes bind display objects to records in the store. For example, I have a field expanded that will display that record with additional information in a data view. Mm -hmm. Before the store is fully loaded, the screen will not display correctly, then update. Is there a way to ensure all bindings are completed before objects on the screen are updated? That's kind of a lot. Let me think. I know I had that once. Um, the main problem was with version six, and um, in there, the, bind, the the initial store without being loaded loaded would come up as an empty store uh, was not an empty store, but was uh, a problem and threw an error even sometimes. But since uh, version six point six seven and seven, uh, there hasn't been that problem for me. Um, if you still have that problem, please contact, feel free to contact me and I will go um, over that with you side by side. All right, great. Well, I just put the slide up with your contact information on the screen. So if anybody has additional questions, they can reach out to you. Also, they can encourage everybody to scan the QR code to give feedback. And there is a link for your fiddle, which you're going to uh, Throw the password on here in a moment as well, and people can uh, also find that there's where they find your your place. Thank you so much, Torsten, for that session. That was great. A lot of good feedback here. Everybody really enjoyed it. Uh, I love these walking through sessions where we just kind of see all the process as we go. So that's great. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks.